Hey YouTube, Corpersan here. Today we're leveling an Aaron to level 200 in the Burning World and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing to level up as fast and efficient as possible while also taking advantage of the special Burning World events. Ah, uh, Burning Worlds, I already missed my Legion and Link skills. In this server you can mega burn two characters and transfer them to the regular server in February. In the Burning World there is a special burning skill that gives a ton of stats and special events to help your characters level up faster so make sure to accept all of those before you start your grind. Also, before we're starting our grind ourselves, the quick word from today's video sponsor, Oprah GX. Opera GX is a browser designed for gaming connoisseurs. It has a ton of built-in features to make sure that you have the best experience both inside and outside of the browser. One thing that I really like is that you can check which tabs consume a lot of resources and you can even limit the RAM the browser itself is using. Which is kinda amazing because then I can let that one game that I play consume all my RAM instead and it definitely does that. And I can also set a network limiter in place which is helpful for when I'm for example streaming. You can add all your socials to a special hotbar on the left for easy access. You can add your Discord, your Twitter, all that good stuff. And there is a ton of customization you can play around with as well. I noticed I can even change my keyboard light settings from the browser to my own likings which was kind of cool and finally there is a special GX corner where you can find all kinds of games in case you're bored of the current game that you're playing you can find the newest releases free games and all the gaming news in one place over there Opera GX is even available on mobile and it can be connected to your desktop version as well if you're interested in checking out Opera GX there is a link in the video description and top comment for you to click on and now back to the video to start off my leveling journey, I went to Streetlights in Edelstein. The Burning World is based on a regular server, so I don't need to be worried about getting clapped by level difference as much as we do in Reboot. Honestly, you can train in Victoria Island or any other class starter areas. These levels go by super fast, it really doesn't matter. Around level 25, I went to Rocky Road because runes can spawn there for some faster leveling, but what do you know, no actual rune spawns. <laughs> Make sure to use the level 30 box to get some free gear because these monsters just refuse to drop anything useful. After that, we're starting the Rihanna Stray Team Dungeon. Those penguins held us out getting started, so it's only polite that we help them as well. Also, this is kind of part of the Step Up event, so we aren't really here by choice anyway. The Step Up event rewards some amazing items, so we're going to complete all of these quests, even if we like it or not. The first one has us defeat 300 monsters, which we will complete as we go through the Steam Dungeon. We're getting some EXP coupons as the first reward, which will come in handy later. The second quest at level 35 has us complete a quest from the Maple Guide, easy peasy, and we get a Hyper Teleport Rock as a reward that's kinda buggy. And bugs will definitely be a thing throughout this video. The next level 40 step up quest is complete the teen dungeon and well guess what, that's what we've been doing this entire time. We reach level 64 by the time we complete this team dungeon and get some free mesos, items and spell traces which are always useful. It's time to keep training and next up on the chopping block are the copper sand rigs. Make sure to keep completing those step up event quests. The one that asks you to complete the third job advancement gives out mastery books which are very useful once you hit 4th job. Next up we're training at stairway to the sky 1 in orbis. Make sure to have your free snail pad out to loot all the stuff that drops on the ground because mesos are scarce. We haven't used any exp cards or totems yet because I was still DCing every 30 minutes at this point due to a bug. Also, fun fact, if you enter the Inferno Wolf portal while there is someone else in there, you're teleported to this weird map. So enter at your own risk. This is happening in the EU Burning World, by the way. I did not have this issue in the reboot server. We're still working on our step up event, and our next mission has us defeat Easy Zakum. Man, talk about a progression slower. At least it's reset time soon, and future step up rewards are definitely worth it. So, with pain in my heart, we defeat Easy Zakum to complete this step and continue training. At level 79 I went to this map here in the Aryan Desert. It's called the Desert of Serenity. It's nice and flat, works even better with a totem, but I don't also have that many reward points. <laughs> so I'm just chilling over here. I think it took me about 8-9 hours with one double EXP card and two totems to reach level 200. Using totems and EXP cards helps a ton, so if you can use them earlier or more, then definitely do that. After that I went to this map which is a hidden map that cannot be seen on the world map. It's a bit long but nice and flattish which is amazing for Aaron to just fly around in. Also make sure to enter all those special portals that contain mini games and whatnot. Those bags reward a ton of spell traces and other useful items which we're gonna need a lot of. The next step up event has a start the silent crusade quest line but I want to gain a few more levels so I can just do the first chapter in one go. So time for some more training at Skynest 2 in Livre. 
When we went to Zakum, I also star forced my weapon to 5 stars because it's low level and cheap to do so we didn't really lose anything anyway. Before we do the 4 job advancement I completed the first chapter of the Silent Crusade questline for the step up event and after that we complete the 4 job advancement and start the new Maple Alive event to gain access to the event store and an event EXP buff and we're going to complete the related step up event quest for this one as well. At this point you shouldn't have that many mesos or spell traces so we're upgrading our weapon that we got from the level 100 box and some of the Maple Pearl set accessories. I also rerolled my inner ability and got some drop rate, messer rate and other stats. Make sure to use your mastery books as well to level up your skills, you get those for free anyway. Fully decked out on Star Force we are trading at dual ghost pirates in Adibrium which is amazing to grind at. And since reset happened we can also go fight normal Zakum. So with a rune active we go there to gain a few free level ups and then it's back to the grind. In hopes of getting some nice stats, I also revealed some stats on familiars and well, what do you know, the Maple Gods has blessed us with 15% ignore defense and a small buff to item drop rate as well. So we're definitely using those later when we go bossing. Next up we have to do one chapter of the Grand at the Neem story dungeon for the Maple Step Up event. I picked chapter 3 because I believe that's the shortest one. So if you want to be efficient, chapter 3 will most likely do. Quick warning though, there are some jump quests in there. But overall this dungeon doesn't take very long. You get a fairy pendant that boosts EXP which is always amazing so you have to do the step up event. The next step up event has us clear two monster park dungeons, no problemo and they give decent EXP as well. Uh, oh wait, yes problemo, when completing this quest it doesn't work, it's bugged so we cannot actually continue to use this step up event. Hopefully this gets fixed soon because a later reward is a box full of boss accessories and other useful items. But for now we're going to continue leveling without the step up event. I completed the wanted sign quest in a green Fulton area for some mesos and used those to star force most of my gear. By the way, when scrolling I always use 70% scrolls. And if you're short on mesos due to star force just sucking your wallets dry, you can always try to find this giant fish boss in Aqua Road. It drops, this fish drops a lot of potions that can be sold for some smaller meso gains. After that I star first a bit more and we're ready for our next challenge. I noticed I was still missing a one mastery book so I went into the Crimson Heart team dungeon which is a very quick team dungeon that is just about defeating some monsters. This team dungeon rewards mastery books and a nice medal. We reached level 148 with all our skills maxed. I felt this was a good time to take on normal Hilla and get some more mesos from her boss crystal. After that I grinded at the Black Wyvern Starforce map in Liefer until I reached level 150. Also with my 3000 Maple Story IQ I made a whoopsie. I realized I totally forgot about the level 130 gift box you get from an event as well. And this one actually contains mastery books. Well you can just go to Black Riven if you don't want to do that team dungeon. Because this box contains mastery books boxes as well. And we'll just use them to get more spell traces. Which is also useful albeit not that efficient I admit I admit. So definitely just trade at Black Riven if you can. Reaching level 150 it was time to set ourselves up for the final grind. Our burning is over and now it's going to be hardcore leveling from here on out. I completed some event dailies and bought double XP cards from the event store. As well as a 7 day pendant slot so I could equip both the EXP. XP and the Maple Pearl Pendant and I spent most of my Monster Park coins on gold potions for my bonus EXP. I also bought the two totems and a 4 hour EXP card for the grind and I defeated normal Horntail in hopes of some boss accessories but even with familiar drop no boss accessories were to be given. We did gain 3 levels though. I found some shoes from Hilla earlier that I'm wearing and I'm star forcing those a bit as well. And with that done I now have 85 Star Force. I even cube my weapon secondary and emblem a bit as well just to gain a few more stats. I use scrolls that I found for that and cubes that I got from the step up event. Secondary weapons and emblems can get attack percentage potential which is a great stat to use especially when you're grinding. Also with the latest update a new hyperstat was introduced called damage against normal monsters. I bought my hyperstats in that just to defeat normal monsters a bit faster so we can grind a bit faster. Our first stop for our grind is Kurning Tower. Since Starforce maps are amazing in the regular server we will just be farming mostly in those. This map is super nice with plenty of spawn which is boosted even more by our totem. Sometimes while you're grinding you also see a notice that a buff will be given out in the event map. Depending on the hour this is either an EXP buff or a damage buff so make sure to pick those up for some faster grinding or better bossing as well. Once we reached level 172 I had a quick stop over at NLC, completed 3 quests from the Lita Lawless NPC and got a coin that I used to purchase an accessory. I bought a ring since we already have a lot of Maple Pearl items. We star for that item as well as our gloves a bit more to hit 104 star force which is plenty for the 5th job advancement. Just keep in mind that you'll need a 10 star weapon for the 5th job advancement as well so make sure to save a drop that you can get to 10 stars. 
We stayed at Blue Notebooks until level 178, then I went up two maps for the final two levels at those deadly dressing tables. After that it was time to go to Swollen Stumps in Future Period, which is a great spot for most classes. I always hyper teleport rock to maps so I don't have to bother with the quests and cutscenes. At level 188 I moved over to Fast 2 because that had really high burning. If this map is full, the Flutter Bus map in Fox Valley and the Fiery Ravine map in Future Period are pretty decent as well as alternatives. Or you can just stay at Swollen Stumps, the map we were at earlier. At level 196 and 50% I went to the scrapyard to complete the introduction quest there to get half a level for free. And that box that we opened earlier, that level 130 box that I totally didn't forget about, also contained 3 level up potions. So we're popping those to get the final 3 levels and boom, done. And that's how I got to level 200 in the burning world. My totem and EXP card did expire while I was grinding, so it took me a bit longer to reach level 200 myself, but I had to eat something in between as well. You should be able to reach level 200 in the burning world fairly quickly, especially with the step up event when that's actually going to be fixed. Hopefully it will be fixed by the time this video goes live. And that was all for today, I hope this video is useful and you now know a bit more how to progress in the burning world. And as always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Niels de Konnik, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hennoy, Avalax, Riley Als, Terry Kim, Varys, Dries Sumker, Wiley, Francisco Sousa, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Safron X, Lonzo, BG Extremes, Anwar NHI, Frank Bouguet, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, BMRWT, Knife Sue, Gen125, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Froggy11, Suratito655, Grayson Lee, Brennan Cam, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Machaka, Ratius, Lucky Beats, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Stevie Zhang, Afterlord underscore MS, Heyo Pan, Simak, Truzira, Joshua Alvarez, Striker Elk, Nokem SS, Niu, Taiwan Pan, Victor Sundstrom, Radicals the Alien, Stanislaus Kasumo Begus, Riser are you MD Harem, Eddie reacts to things, Dular, Gummy Bullet, Liron Reddle, and Booty Warrior GT. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!